I'm Robert Anthony. I'm Joelle Anthony. This is Watson. In 2020, we felt God's call in our lives to do something incredibly radical. In 2023, we sold our flower shop, our home, just about everything we own, and purchased our Winnebago Flex RV. This began our trek into the vast unknown. Our mission is to take you along, showing you things you otherwise may never be able to see. We would be so thankful to have you follow along and become part of our adventures. Now, let's get to today's video. Hey family, how you doing? Robert Anthony here. In today's video, we are going to go over how I have successfully attained or added 1,000 170 watts of solar to my Winnebago 2108 DS Flex Series Camper. In today's video, I'm going to give you a comprehensive guide or a comprehensive look at how I've gone through that process to use all the available real estate on my rig to get this solar installed. I'm going to show you what charge controllers I've used, how I've wired them, as well as uh, giving you some significant thoughts toward the end. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm going to kind of wrap up everything in a quick synopsis or a quick kind of Cliff Notes version of what I have on this rig, how I've done it, and um, to help you make some decisions on what you want to do. I'm also going to give you some final thoughts. Uh, if I had to do things over again, what I would do differently, and these are really important. So down below, you're going to have chapter markers. If you want to just fast forward to a quick overview, uh, you can do that. And if you want to see my final thoughts on everything as it relates to what I've done with this unit, you can go to that marker as well. So without further ado, let's get into our install of our final solar panel, uh, and then we'll get into my final thoughts. All right, we're gonna go over um, all of the various tools that you're gonna need to complete this project, depending on what you wanna do. For everything that I'm talking about in this video today, there will be a link in the description below so you can purchase it if you choose to do this. Now, if you have just the two panels on yours and you wanna add another 190 watts and not do like I've had to do and really amp up my total wattage, uh, for our needs, you could pick up this 190, drop it in, mount it to the roof, and you're good to go. For today's install, we're going to need our, our new solar panel, which is what we're, we have right here. You're going to need a pair of wire strippers. I've got these Klein knockoffs. They're pretty good. You're going to need, of course, solar panel mounts. I've got these from Bouge RV, available on Amazon. You're going to need a solar connector crimper along with the solar connectors and the metal pins. You're gonna need some die core lap sealant. In my case, because I'm gonna do this a little bit differently, we need some advanced silicone or some kind of silicone sealant. And in my case also, because I'm doing something different, we're gonna be using JB Weld, and I will show you why we're gonna need that in just a moment. But you're gonna need your 12 gauge wire to run your solar connection to connect to your other panels. Don't cheap out on your wiring. Don't buy aluminum wire, buy copper tinned or cop solid copper wire. It does cost more, but the conductivity of it is much greater. You're penny wise and pound foolish if you buy aluminum wire. Make sure you're buying solid copper wire. Link in the description for all of the relative things that you're going to need, including the solar panel. So let's talk about what we're going to do. So I'm going to be mounting this 190 watt panel, and you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm mounting it to the the nose of my rig. That's where it's going. It's gonna go on here. It's a great slope for that. And talking to my friend that does solar for a living, he said these panels are very, very rigid. Uh, it's gonna take a lot to crack one. So I'm telling you that I personally am okay with taking a risk of mounting this panel on the front of my rig. Uh, that's why we're gonna be using the JB Weld. You're taking a risk if you do it. You know, I, I can't say one way or the other whether I recommend it, Check with me a year from now and we'll see how it's doing. But because I already have the 100 watt panels in the spot where this one would go if you don't have my setup, um, I'm choosing to put it on the, on the nose here because that's the closest to those units not having to run a whole bunch more wire to get it done. And I want to be running as much solar as possible. This solar panel here gives me uh, you know, another 190 watts for $169. So it's money well spent as far as I'm concerned. So we're going on the nose, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's start the install.
it's a prevention thing. So um, kind of to summarize what I've done on this rig, I have two rich solar solar panels. From a measurement standpoint, they fit directly and nicely next to the air conditioner. Those are each 100 watts. Then uh, in the space between the two factory installed original GoPower solar panels, I have two HQST 100 watt panels a little bit shorter and the reason that those are a little bit more square is because I needed those to fit on top of each other uh, if they would have been longer panels yes they would have been more narrow in that space but they would have taken up too much length and they would have shot out much farther over the front of the coach than what these two HQSTs do now as I alluded to earlier um, were you to only want to add, uh, just simply add a 190 watt panel between your two Go Powers, which your charge controller that's, in, that's provided to you by the factory is well able to handle one more 190 watt wired in series. Um, that is uh, available, that space, that, that real estate is available if that's all you want to do. Uh, you could do that right there, uh, but in my rig, um, the factory had mounted those two Go Powers so close together that I had to actually cut the brackets um, and then install new brackets to move my two Go Powers farther apart to make enough room either for 190 watt or uh, the two 100 watts. That's what I did there. Those are all the, the two 100 watt HQSTs and the two 100 uh, watt Rich Solars are wired in parallel. Uh, those come down off of the roof through that three quarter inch uh, CPVC conduit that goes into the side of the rig through a hole that I dug. I sealed it off uh, quite a bit with a, a great caulking um, and I mounted it uh, with uh, self-tapping screws to the rig. Um, and that goes in and that goes to the 50 amp Renogy DC to DC controller, which I installed uh, after market. 
So the reason that I installed the 50 amp DC to DC charger after market is because I wanted to not only be able to charge my battery while I'm driving uh, and provide that option for me, but I also wanted to add additional solar. So on my wiring of all the panels uh, that I've put in, I've used 12 gauge copper, um, solid copper. You wanna make sure that if you're doing any of this, that you don't cheap out on your wire, go with solid copper. Also, I want to address this in this video here, just so it's clear. Um, I'm not technically trained in solar, although I am going to the NRVTA Solar Academy to learn how to do solar. Um, I know there are a lot of purists out there uh, and, and, and people that are going to look at the way the wires are in the parallel connections on my roof there. Um, and they're not all neatly tied together with zip ties or running in conduit. There's a reason that I chose to do it that way. I follow Will Prowse on the DIY Solar. He's got a huge YouTube presence, um, and that young man really seems to know what he's doing as it relates to all things solar. And I watched a video recently from him talking about running your wiring and how a lot of people want to put the wiring together in zip ties or in wire loom or in conduit. Um, for 12 volts specifically, he said that's, that's a bad idea. That wire conducts heat. The more of it's bundled together, uh, you know, in a nice, neat and orderly fashion, the, the greater the heat buildup is in there. So um, while I did, you know, staple it up and make it nice and neat on the inside in the storage, up there I chose to just, per his suggestion, uh, just kind of let it flow and instead just tapped it down with die course self-leveling sealant to hold it in place. So no, it's not neat. Um, no, it's not nice at right angles and everything else, but uh, that's just the information that I found in the way that I chose to do it because honestly, nobody's up there looking at it. Uh, nobody's going to be stepping on it. Uh, and I could see no reason to not go with his suggestion as far as the overall wiring goes and how to secure it down. At least for me, that's what I chose to do. And I honestly just don't see much, much wrong with it other than it's messy, you know, and I typically am not one that likes to be messy, but eh, you know, choose your battles. When I originally started this process and talked to uh, Go Power, they said that Winnebago had uh, inappropriately wired the solar on the side port and they wired it in parallel to the connection to the uh, Go Power charge controller, meaning it wouldn't be running the way that it's supposed to. So he recommended at that time, don't even consider using the solar on the side controller with another panel um, unless you rewire it to its own individual charge controller. Well, once I decided that I was gonna add all this solar and gonna add that second charge controller, that's exactly what I did. I cut the wires going to the Go Power MPPT charge controller, and I rewired those over to the DC to DC charger uh, from Renogy. So now my solar on the side solar panel, which I am able to take out, I store that in the truck when I'm leaving or when we're going somewhere, that comes out. I put some aluminum brackets on the side so I could tilt it, um, and then I'm able to tilt that toward the sun. That makes a significant difference in how much solar panel power that one specifically will provide overall to my entire rig. Lastly, uh, what I have done is I have uh, installed on the front of my rig, uh, on the nose, uh, one more 190 watt HQST solar panel. That one works in the voltage, you know, the voltage on that one is very close to the Go Power units uh, that I have installed on by the factory on top of the rig. Um, and that's wired up in series to the two Go Power panels. I'm not going to get into wiring in parallel or in series, uh, but uh, you can look that up and learn more about that on your own. But suffice it to say, the uh, Go Power charge controller uh, is running the panels in series, and the Renogy uh, charge controller is running the uh, 600 watts in parallel. Those are all running in parallel, the way that those are charging. Um, I put this panel on the nose, uh, and I'm, I'm going to be, wherever we camp, I will be pointing the nose at the approximate uh, one o'clock position, the one to two o'clock position uh, toward the horizon to maximize the sun output on the front of this rig wherever we go, as much as I possibly can. That's how I've done uh, my rig, um, and then you could do your rig the same should you choose 
to follow my example. So let me give you some final thoughts uh, as it relates to this whole unit, the, the, the flex unit. Um, it's, it's total solar uh, and, and my thinking as it relates to adding a second battery, what I plan to do, why I chose to do this, and so on and so forth. The first thing I want to get to before it slips my mind is if I had to do it all over again, one of the things that I would have done is I would have actually put in the uh, space there where the two go powers are at the third panel. I had been on the fence about this, doing this, and whether or not we were going to keep this rig for an extended period of time. Uh, as we live full time, we have already thought about the probability that we're going to upgrade. But as I've done more research, in order to upgrade, I'm going to have to upgrade our truck. And I love my Toyota but we're gonna to have to go to a Ford, uh, something much larger that can handle more weight. We're not gonna get into a giant fifth wheel, but anything we wanna buy is gonna be from like, say, Ember or Bigfoot trailers. They're gonna be much heavier, strain that truck. Uh, so we're gonna end up upgrading our, our rig and our tow vehicle at some point. With that being said, um, this unit provides what we need. Uh, remember when we started doing this, we were living in a Dodge Grand Caravan, and so uh, I made the decision since we're here work camping for a few months in the Sonoran Desert at, a, at an RV park, which is why we're hooked up, this would be a good opportunity to really retrofit and do some of this work that needs to be done because I have access to tools and uh, uh, constant power. So I made the decision to go ahead and add that last solar panel on the front. I got that idea from somebody that we've met while we were out on the road. Seems crazy to put that solar panel on the nose of this rig, but I've talked to a couple of people People, and apparently the glass on these is it can handle quite a bit as far as like if it were to get a stone or something like that while we're driving which I don't foresee happening uh, the truck is so high it blocks most of the stuff coming back to the nose of the of the rig so we've chosen to keep the rig and because we've chosen to keep the rig we're not sure how long we're going to keep it for whether it's a year or two kind of whatever God decides I wanted to maximize this solar so I would have put the HQST panel between the two and then the other 100 waters on the, on the nose is what I would have done. Secondly, um, I, one of the things that I had wished that I had done differently uh, in thinking about it, when I had to move the, the Go Power panels, I bought aluminum Hurricane bracket. Those allowed me, similar to the factory install, to insert screws in the side and mount those panels. For the rich solar panels uh, on the side near the air conditioner, and for the one on the front here that I have not only JB welded, but I've also used your standard uh, rich solar panel mounting brackets, the issue that we have is once those are down and those are sealed, or in this case on the front, are actually uh, glued to the, <laughs> to the rig, to the coach. Should I ever need to remove those for any reason, it's going to be an effing nightmare to get those off. On the front one, I've got enough space and the panel's thick enough, I can drill into the side there to get to the bolt, because those are bolted underneath. They're bolted and then they're screwed into the coach. I guess assuming that you're going to mount it there for forever, which I don't ever plan to move it, but if I ever wanted to, I'm not going to take it off if we sell the coach, but if I ever needed to get to wiring or anything, I've got some real problems on my hands. So were I to do it all over again, I would, I would make sure that all of the mounting brackets that I'm using, both on the top and on the front, would be like those that I've installed the, that I reinstalled the Go Power panels with. Uh, on, the, on the sides where I can take those off and if I need to I can just hacksaw them off because once they're sealed on it's like doing brain surgery. It's very fine work to cut the die core lap sealant uh, in such a fashion that you don't rip your rubber membrane off when you're trying to take things out. Cutting them off and just sealing over the top of them makes more sense than trying to take them off. And I use that same style of bracket on the HQST panels uh, that I installed between those. So if you're doing this, uh, think down the road, uh, how am I going to get this panel off and take my advice, uh, make sure that you're doing it uh, that way so you can access those. Now I use JB Weld on mine because this is mounted and, it, and while that panel only weighs about 35 pounds on the front of the unit, uh, that does provide some sheer load and those screws are not going into studs. Um, and I didn't want to go through the process of going all the way through the rig and bolting them on the inside really for a 30 pound solar panel. So again, it's on there forever. So whoever buys this rig from us is going to have that solar panel on there. If I do need to take it off, I'll manage to get it off. Uh, and finally, if you know me and you follow me on the Facebook groups or on the YouTube channel, we will eventually be upgrading our battery. Why did I choose to go with adding more solar over adding another battery is because first of all, the lithionic battery is way too expensive. I'm just not going to do it. 
Second of all, um, the battery is meant to get you through the night. In our heaviest usage, heated tanks being on, furnace being on, fridge being on, leaving Starlink on overnight because I have my Starlink on 12 volt, my battery has gone down to the lowest, about 45% from a full charge at night. The battery is meant exclusively to get you through the night until you get sun the next day. Now, assuming that the next days are not cloudy, um, I have enough solar on this that I go from 45 or 50% up to full charge before about 11 or 12 in the morning. And then my panels are enough. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get in the desert sun here. Uh, I'm gonna get about 70% efficiency once March hits. So you do the math, you know, I'm getting 1170 watts times 70 percent. I'm getting a lot of juice flowing in uh, at any one time. That's plenty more than enough to run everything on my rig all day long without depleting my battery. I am, however, uh, at some point going to upgrade. 320 amp hours is adequate, but it's not enough given the fact that we live on the road full time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list for sale my Lithionics battery if anybody's interested in pairing that with their, their own uh, Lithionics 320 amp hour battery. I'm going to list my battery for sale and I'm going to be in, installing in parallel probably three to, I'm sorry, six to 900 amp hours worth of batteries in the front compartment there, replacing the Lithionics. I found a couple of brands that I really like, one in specific that I'm going to go with. Um, and, and eventually we're going to do that so that we have enough battery that a couple of cloudy days aren't going to concern me too much. Worst case scenario, I can pull out our uh, champion dual fuel propane generator and give us a top off charge which we've done in the past and I'll make a separate video about that. So listen I hope that this has been informative to you. I hope that it's been helpful. If you have any questions that I haven't addressed in the video please leave them in the uh, comments section below. Jeez oh Pete's I have to now get to a workout. I've been waiting a number of days to make this video and uh, now that it's quiet enough other than the animals and the birds going crazy around here and no desert wind, I've been able to finally cut this finishing up of this video. So uh, hey, uh, according to YouTube, uh, this video here is the one that it thinks you would like to watch uh, more than anything and this video here is going to be all things Winnebago. You can see those in that playlist here. And uh, if you click that button right down here, you can subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, we'll see you in the next one. Rob out.